Okay, and we are live. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with this evening's live stream. It is 7.36 p.m. in Spain, 6.36 p.m. in Portugal, and today is the 28th of March, of course. And today we're going to look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press in Spain. We'll look at some comments that have been left on videos recently also, and we'll also go here to my right and have a look at what is happening in the chat section this evening. So stay tuned for that. Around the, the 20 minute mark of this evening's live stream, we'll go into the chat. So if you've got something to say, the chat section is the place for you. Now, straight into the news, and prosecutors are asking for two and a half years in prison for Luis Rubiales for kissing Jenny Hermoso and coercing her. The public prosecutor's office of the Audencia Nacional is requesting two and a half years in prison for Luis Rubiales for the kiss on the mouth that the former president of the Royal Spanish Football Federation gave to the athlete Jenny Hermoso last August, as well as for the alleged subsequent coercion. She is asking the former football manager, to compensate her with 50,000 euros. Specifically, the prosecutor, Marta Durantez, is asking for one year in prison for the crime of sexual assault and a further 18 months for the pressure that Rubiales allegedly put on Hermoso to try to get her to publicly play down what happened. So there we go, two and a half years in prison, possibly for Mr. Rubiales, I think uh, two and a half years here in Spain means that you have a suspended sentence. Not sure whether he will ever see the inside of a prison cell. Don't know. Uh, some people are saying that this is uh, ridiculous, ludicrous, uh, a year sentence for kissing somebody. Uh, other people are saying that it is just. So uh, let me know where you stand on the matter. It's been going on now for a long time and uh, hopefully will come to a head soon uh, when Mr. Rubiales gets back to Spain. Because as we know, he's currently out of the country, I believe, in the Dominican Republic, working away, considering that he probably can't get a job in Spain anymore uh, with his uh, damaged reputation, Mr. Rubiales. Second piece of news, this one here, and Spaniards are paid 18 euros for every hour they work, six less than the European average and 13 less than in Germany. Spaniards were paid 18.2 euros per hour of work in 2023, according to Eurostat figures released on Wednesday. As is often the case in labour comparisons with Europe, the national figure is worse than the continental average. The EU average is 24 euros, six more, than, six more than Spain. The figure is also worse than that of other major European countries. Pay is better in Italy, 21.5 euros, France, 28.7 Germany 31.6, wages were also better in Belgium 36.3, the Netherlands 33, or Sweden 26.3. The Spanish figure does not exceed that reported by Portugal 13 euros and 70 cents per hour, Greece 12.60, or Poland 11.90, uh, and by far the worst figures. These are Latvia 10 euros 70 per hour, Romania 10 euros 40 and Bulgaria, eight euros and 10 cents per hour is what people earn there on average. So Spain around 18 euros for every hour worked. Some people will say that uh, that is not much. I don't know. Let me know your opinion on the matter, please, as to whether that is a good salary or not. I don't know, but uh, with the high cost of living, some people would say that perhaps it's a little bit low. It's a little bit low. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know. All right, good. Now, we'll go into the uh, third piece of news here. And uh, interesting news for drivers. And according to the head of the traffic directorate in Spain, in summer there will be camouflaged motorbikes patrolling the roads. The general director of traffic in Spain, Pere Navarro, is immersed in a new Easter week campaign for which 16 million journeys are expected to be made. The interview takes place at the DGT headquarters hours before the Spanish roads fill up with vehicles, traffic jams and possible incidents. However, Navarro takes it easy, surrounded by his team, who even ask him about the slogans that the illuminated signs will display during the festive season. 
One that cannot be missed is the total number of deaths during this time last year. 35 deaths at Easter last year. And some of the questions that were posed to Mr Navarro by this newspaper. Will there be more speed cameras installed in Spain? The answer is yes. This year that we are expected to install 88 more speed cameras. Compared to Europe, he says... We have very few speed cameras. Will, they, will the problem of scooters and non-compliance with the road rules be addressed? And he answered, we have made technical regulations such as the prohibition of riding on the road, the maximum speed, or not being able to ride on pavements. For this legislature, we there will be compulsory helmet, helmets, a minimum age of 16, and the registration of scooters to identify the vehicles. And what new features do you have planned for this year as far as traffic regulations are concerned or controls? And he said from summer onwards or from the summer onwards, uh, there will be camouflage motorbikes patrolling the roads so that the motorcyclist next to you may be a civil guard police officer. So if you are planning to drive in Spain, watch out. You might have a camouflaged or a uh, person in plain clothes next to you that is indeed a civil guard officer so uh, be careful if you were driving in Spain after the summer I think it was there now into the comment section let's have a look at the first one here from Tracy wow Stuart I woke up uh, put the MSN news on the tablet and there you popped up talking about living in Spain fame at last yeah not sure about fame Tracy this was in GB news I think the article was. They uh, highlighted a video that I put out last year, I think, uh, with some negative points about Spain. And of course, uh, when, you talk, when you talk about anything negative, it can get picked up by the interna international press, especially the uh, anti-European press in the United Kingdom, GB News being one of those. And uh, I did feature. It's the second or third time that I have featured. Other YouTubers here in Spain have also featured. But basically, as I said, anything negative about Spain, it uh, gets on their radar and they often uh, do stories on it. So uh, thanks, Tracy, and the other, per uh, the other people, the two or three people that brought my attention to the fact that I had uh, made GB News. Do I get anything out of it? No, not very much because there's no link to the video in question. They just do an article with my picture and uh, no link to the video. So I don't get much uh, follow on from those uh, news stories in the British press, or at least I don't think so. I might do, but I don't think so. Thanks, Tracy, for pointing it out. Another one here from Marilyn. I've never understood why British people love Spain so much. Give me France and Italy every time. Yeah, thanks, uh, Marilyn, for that. We've had this uh, question or this uh, statement uh, mentioned on the channel quite a lot. Why do British people love Spain? Why do British people flock to Spain every year? Uh, of course, the number one group of foreign tourists in Spain come from the United Kingdom. 20 million I think last year was the uh, figure around that. Not sure if it was a, a, some, a few more, a few less, but around 20 million people. And uh, basically, I imagine it's because of the weather, the guaranteed sunshine and the places that are available in Spain for a lot of British people, which uh, make them feel very much like home. Uh, what's happened is that a lot of the uh, resorts in Spain have adapted their um, uh, bars and restaurants to British tastes and basically people that 40 years ago went to places like Blackpool now come to places like Spain because they have the same uh, things on offer roughly uh, and uh, better weather which is the key it's all about the weather and uh, in France do you get good weather maybe for uh, two or three months of the year in Italy is it like Spain I think there are some similarities but places like Alicante places like Malaga guaranteed weather and uh, they make people feel like home with some of the businesses that have been set up there. Another one here from Wolf. I wish you a happy holiday, mate. You've earned it. Weather here in Thadagotha, very mixed. Cuidate. Yeah, thanks, uh, Wolf, for that. I imagine the weather in uh, mainland Spain has been a bit rough over the last uh, few days. It's also been quite wet, wild and windy here in Portugal but of course as we know a lot of the storms that hit mainland Spain start here move their way across the Iberian uh, Peninsula as they say uh, so no doubt the weather has not been 
all that good in Spain, even though I don't know. I've heard that in Madrid it's been a little bit cold, a little bit wet. Some people said it snowed the other day in Madrid. Not sure, but uh, as I said, here in Portugal hasn't been the best weather that I've seen. But uh, thanks, Wolf, for that, and uh, thanks for uh, uh, wishing me a happy holiday. Another one here from uh, Matt in Malaga. Give Catalonia and their independence if they don't want to be Spanish, providing they lose everything Spanish, including their passports, DNIs, identity cards, that is, driving licenses, pensions, EU membership, the Euro free movement in the Schengen area, ETC, ETC, ETC. Yeah, thanks, uh, Matt. I'm sure that uh, the Catalonians or the Catalans have a plan for this. If they do become independent, we know that Mr. Puigdemont, every uh, second uh, thing that comes out of his mouth is uh, 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 independence. Uh, we want uh, self-determination. We want to be able to decide for ourselves. Well, we want to become independent. He seems to be going on about that quite a lot recently, given that uh, uh, everything else has been given to him by the uh, central government. So he thinks that he can push it even further. And uh, all the things that you mentioned there, I imagine what the Catalans are uh, thinking is that they come to an agreement with Spain to keep their pensions, keep their driver's licenses, keep their Spanish nationality, but also be independent at the same time, be part of the euro as well. I imagine that's the plan. Uh, I imagine they want to still be in the Schengen zone. I imagine they want all of these things. Uh, the expression, have your cake and eat it too, comes to mind. I imagine that's what they want. But it is going to be difficult because uh, people working in Catalonia have been putting uh, money into the state pension system, the state being the Spanish state pension system. Driver's licenses, as Matt points out, are Spanish driver's licenses. So all of this would have to uh, be agreed on or um, some type of exchange. I've got no idea. Uh, so it's, uh, it sounds uh, uh, a bit more complicated than I think Mr. Puigdemont and company uh, would like us to believe. But that's just uh, my opinion, of course, and uh, Matt's there. And uh, also saying here, EU membership. Uh, the euro, again, yeah, good questions. Passports, maybe they'll have a dual citizenship uh, option. I've got no idea, but uh, if the current Spanish government, uh, if the current Spanish government, sorry, is at the negotiation table, they'll get everything they want. Next one here from uh, Kells. The city itself is disappointing in my opinion. I like the area of San Juan and its surrounds. Malaga, which would be similar in size, is nicer as in Valencia, uh, I believe there is an, uh, an AVE or AVE fast train to Barcelona via Valencia. Talking about Alicante is uh, Kells here. And uh, I'll just point out the last uh, part of this comment. I don't think there is an AVE fast train from Alicante to Barcelona. There is a train, but I don't think it's a fast train. It travels at a reasonable speed, I think 200 kilometers per hour hour per hour it travels at, but not up to the 300, 300 plus uh, speed that the AVE travels between Alicante and Madrid, for example, or between Valencia and Madrid, for example. So they don't have a fast train. There is a train, yes, but it's not one of these uh, high speed trains, I don't think. And uh, the other part of the uh, comment here, the city itself is disappointing in this person's opinion. Uh, well, I didn't mind uh, Alicante. It's a uh, uh, a relatively small city, 300,000 people on the sea, uh, Mediterranean weather, what more do you want? It uh, has its cons, of course. Every city has its cons. It has its pros. But uh, I didn't see it as a, as a bad city the time that I was there. But again, just my opinion, of course. Another one here from uh, the Alquitron, I think this is. If it's not, sorry. Hi, Stu, just a heads up about YouTube. I'm surprised. I'm subscribed to your channel and would get your new videos in my suggestions. But it, it's been a couple of weeks now and they don't show. I was wondering if something had happened to you, so I had to purposely go to your channel only to find out that you had been posting as usual. Something happened to the algorithm. Yeah, we mentioned this the other day, that the uh, YouTube algorithm is not easy to understand. Sometimes uh, people drop off the face of the earth. Uh, of course, because uh, maybe YouTube thinks that you're interested in other things. Um, so it is quite easy for uh, my videos not to show up in your feed. Why this happens, I've got absolutely no idea. I can't say, 
but uh, it is a fact and uh, other people have complained about this as well. I think somebody said that they hadn't seen videos for four years and found out that I was still doing videos. So uh, surprising, but it's the way YouTube works. It's the algorithm, the algorithm as uh, I said, and this person said as well. And it's just, the, it's just something with the, the back end of YouTube. It happens to me. Uh, channels that I watch uh, or I used to watch frequently, they disappear. And then some, then all of a sudden, sometimes they pop up again in your feed. So uh, again, don't know what's going on, but the algorithm obviously thinks that your tastes have changed or they want to give you something new or they want to promote a different creator, creator on YouTube. I think that's how it works. But again, I don't really know. Uh, that's that one. And uh, the last one here from uh, Immobiliaria Denia. Come and visit Denia in Alicante, a fishing port, coastal town with long sandy beaches and a great atmosphere, says Immobiliaria or real estate in uh, Denia. Thank you very much for the comment. And uh, Denia is a place that has never really been on my radar. I've got friends that have a holiday home there and they go there all the time, but uh, I've never really... Um, I had the uh, idea to go to Denia, but uh, I might take that person's recommendation and uh, visit the city one day. I don't know. If uh, anybody knows Denia, let me know what it's like. Is it a decent city? Let me know. Now, I'm going to go into the uh, chat section in just a minute. Before I do, I'm going to put the like button on the screen. If you haven't hit the like button yet, please do so. Just below the video, you will find it. Um, we're currently at like number 60, so if you hit the like button, maybe you'll be like number 61, 62, or like number 63. If you have any information that you would like to send me, the e email address is this one here, spainspeaks at gmail.com. Don't forget to send through your photos. Uh, people that watch the channel regularly will know that during these live streams, I, I put uh, photos on the backdrop here. I can't do it today because I don't have a green screen, but uh, next week things will be back to normal. So uh, if you've got a, a decent photo to send through, the email address is that one there, or anything else that you would like to bring to my attention. Uh, thanks to people that have supported the channel, of course. Super thanks on YouTube, super chat option now today in the live stream. Uh, people that have bought me a coffee, buymeacoffee.com and uh, Patreon, patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for that support. And people that have joined the channel as members recently, uh, for $1.99 a month, you get some perks if you join the channel and you keep the channel going, basically, with your support. So uh, thanks to people that have supported the channel in recent times. Now, into the chat section, I'm going to go. Let's see what's happening there today. Let's see what's happening today. Uh, let me scroll up to the top. Let's see what's going on. Erica is the first person that I can see in the chat today. Hi from a mild terrassa. Hope everyone is having a nice week and getting ready for a long weekend. Enjoying a lovely glass of white La Mancha wine. There we go. Erica getting ready for a long weekend. Of course, I think in Catalonia, Monday is a holiday. In uh, Madrid, it is not. But in Catalonia, I think there are, uh, in, in places like Terrassa in Catalonia, correct me if I'm wrong, Erica, but it is a holiday on Monday, right? Uh, Maga coming in from El Campello, Alicante, saying hello is Maga. James and Kathy coming in from a wet Worcester, Spain in eight weeks' time. Enjoy your uh, trip back to Spain. Can't wait, they say. Uh, Pamela coming in from San Juan de los Terreros. Regular viewer is Pamela. Good to see you in the chat, Pamela. Sani, also a regular viewer, coming in from Basingstoke in the United Kingdom, England to be exact. Alan Felices Pascuas, says Alan. Valued member is Alan, hence the little yellow symbol next to his name. Thanks, Alan, for that. Hope you have a good Easter as well. Um, coming in from San Diego also is Alan. I should mention that. Uh, Sadia asking a question from Bangladesh. I'd uh, like to know which city is best affordable for international students in Spain. Thanks, uh, Sadia, for that. To be honest, I've got no idea what would be the uh, cheapest city, but probably uh, avoid the two biggest cities or the three or four biggest cities if you're looking for uh, more affordable living. Uh, that would be uh, avoid Madrid, avoid Barcelona, avoid Valencia maybe. But uh, other places you could, you could perhaps get a better 
uh, cost of living, let's say. High Flyer John coming in uh, from the UK. Uh, best wishes for the evening, br uh, the Easter break, sorry. Thanks for that, uh, John. Leonor coming in. Thanks uh, for that, Leonor, with a uh, thumbs up. Thumbs up uh, to uh, the channel saying thanks. Thanks, uh, Leonor, for that. Uh, exploring with Jen also here, who has sent me some information in recent times. Jen, coming in from Valencia, hoping that we are well. Thanks for that. Miguel coming in also, wishing us a happy Easter. Uh, raining very heavy where Miguel is today in uh, Derbyshire, or I think it's uh, Derbyshire or Derbyshire. I think Derbyshire, I think we agreed on, right? In uh, where I come from, we pronounce that word differently, of course. Uh, Dallas, heavy rain in the Manchester area of England also, so very wet in the UK it seems. Uh, Bronnie coming in from uh, Wales, I think it is, South Wales, two inches of snow, all melted now but still raining and bitterly cold, says Bronnie. Yes, Bronnie, bitterly cold there, two inches of snow. Uh, Miguel saying that Spaniards get paid less on average because job job in services are never well paid. That is true, Miguel. That is true. Uh, Austria, most normal people get around fifteen to twenty euros before tax. Before tax, says Jan, obviously referring to the wages article that we saw before. Uh, I didn't mention what uh, the highest countries are in Europe. I think Finland is up in the forty euros an hour. And that's why Spain is such an attractive destination for people from those northern European countries because they come down there with higher salaries. Everything's cheaper. But for us uh, that live in Spain and earn Spanish salaries, we're going to have to go to somewhere where it's a lot cheaper. Hence uh, why I come to Portugal. Uh, Erica also saying here that the fact that salaries are lower is mostly due to high unemployment, thus it's easy to control as people need to work. Thanks, Erica, for that. Uh, GB News, according to Miguel, is absolute rubbish. There is a uh, rumour that GB News is running out of money. Uh, it could be uh, true, I don't know, but a rumour, says Miguel. Gigi coming in from uh, Arizona, uh, surprise Arizona, out uh, walking in the desert hills and listening to this on my phone. Once again, thanks for the afternoon entertainment, very uh, uh, informative as always, says Gigi, who no doubt will be back in Spain very shortly. Uh, Zaruk saying that if a motorbike is doing less than 130 k's an hour, may we assume it's the Guardia Civil. Maybe, I don't know, but I, uh, all I know is that on my trip here to Portugal, I had some motorcycles speed past me at a very, very high speed. Wow, they just uh, zipped past. And it's uh, quite dangerous because you don't see them coming in your rear vision mirror. So you, you might go to overtake a car and then all of a sudden you have this motorcycle uh, rammed, up your, uh, rammed up your behind. Dangerous, dangerous. Uh, Miguel is saying that the independence fever is gone and low support for independence in Catalonia at the moment. Yes, but as we know, Mr. Puigdemont is back to stir up trouble, Miguel. We'll wait and see, but uh, uh, Pedro Sanchez is, of course, betting on that, isn't he? But uh, you never know what can happen in those elections on the 12th of May. You never know. Uh, Erica agrees with me. Uh, you don't have a clue, and I'd say that Puigdemont and company don't have any clear ideas. They're uh, incapable of explaining what will happen. That's uh, true. That is true. I don't think they've really given the full story of how independence would take place, or at least I haven't heard anything in, in Madrid. Uh, Jonathan saying, will I take another trip to the Canaries in the future? Loved your Tenerife video, says Jonathan. I planned on it, John, uh, to be honest, but uh, I don't know whether I'll get around to it anytime soon. Maybe at the end of the year. Uh, we were planning on going to Fuerteventura this year, but didn't get around to it for whatever reason. Still could be on the cards. I'm not going to uh, write it off just yet. Could still be on the cards. Kurt coming in from Florida, also a valued member, hoping everyone is well and everything is well with everyone. Darren saying that there's lots of speed cameras in the UK, especially in es Essex. Went past two uh, speed traps today and uh, very hard to keep a clean license over here. 
Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it, with the uh, point system. Also a point system in Spain, but uh, as far as I know, I haven't uh, lost any points yet. Or at least I don't think so. Bob coming in from, uh, not sure, I think uh, Bob's in Spain, coming in, also a valued member. Catalonia may want independence, but they firstly have to join a queue and uh, they have to be voted in by unanimous vote of every existing EU member. Uh, will they be as compliant as Sanchez? Good question. Bob, don't know again. Rory saying that today's a fiesta on uh, Mallorca, except for uh, Autonomo Warriors such as uh, Rory. Yeah, Autonomos don't get uh, fiestas, right? Unfortunately, unfortunately. Doris coming in from Austria. I think we've got a couple of people, a couple of people today coming in from uh, Austria. Also saying is Doris that uh, don't like Denia too much, but love Benissa and Calpe. Also down there in Alicante. Uh, Alex saying uh, Semana Santa sobre dosis de chocolate, overdosing on chocolate. Uh, yes, uh, Easter eggs, uh, no doubt. Easter eggs. Hank coming in from Orange County, California. Uh, your videos take me back to Spain. Thanks, Hank, for that. Um, Alan also saying here that when I was a cop, we called motorbike speeders future organ donors. There we go, because obviously the risk of death from uh, falling off that motorcycle at a high speed. But as we know, people like the cheap death. Osawaka coming in from a wet and cold Oregon hoping that we are well, and, uh, and also wishing people a happy Easter from uh, Costa Teguise. I think that is Teguise in Lanzarote, down there in the Canary Islands. Now that's the end of the uh, chat, so I'm going to wrap the live stream up. A little bit shorter today, but uh, I'll be back on Sunday with another one. Hope to see you guys there. I hope everybody has a fantastic uh, start to Easter at least and uh, manage people manage to relax a few days off work if that is the case and also uh, to get away if you are lucky enough to get away over the Easter break. Hopefully where you are the weather's a bit better than where I am here. Uh, here still wet, raining at the moment and uh, very windy and wild as I said. One more comment here from Todd. Texas is talking about independence too. Wonder what mess would ensue. Yeah, uh, where I come from in Australia, they talk about independence as well, but it's just talk. I mean, let's be honest, Western Australia, really, could it uh, break away from the rest of the country? I've got no idea. I don't think so. But some people wish that would happen. I don't know. And uh, Christoph uh, saying, uh, greetings from West Palm Beach in Florida. Greetings also to you there. Now, that's the end of the live stream. As I said, thanks for tuning in. Back again on Sunday. Hope to see you then. Have a fantastic start to the uh, break. If you're lucky enough to have one, hasta luego, hasta entonces. Adios.